Well, good morning. We are now live on uh, Facebook. Just bring the volume down a bit. Uh, welcome to the service today. We are going to spend the next hour together worshiping the Lord, praying together, encouraging one another, and we're going to take a look into the book of Proverbs. But as we begin today, let's say our Bible verse together that we've been learning. So it's from Philippians 4, 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 4 to 7. And in another week or two, we're going to get a new Bible verse to learn, so we try to take three months to learn a Bible verse. And then we learn another one, and hopefully along the way it just settles into our hearts, and then the Holy Spirit will bring it to our minds uh, as we think about how do I live the Christian life. And that's the question we ask every day. How do I live as a follower of Jesus? I'm his child. I belong to him. And that's when we have that mindset, then that guides our steps uh, through the day. Uh, nice to see Wayne visiting with us today. Welcome back, Wayne. Yes, we missed you. So all the way from Bolton, I guess. Quick, down, uh, down 27, there's a million more houses, though, to drive by. But uh, glad to have you back visiting with us today. Thank you. A uh, couple of announcements um, this morning. First off, our Bible reading. We've got one more week in the book of Proverbs. And uh, Proverbs is meant to be, we, we've been reading it fast. I know six, six weeks seems like a long time, but we've been actually reading it fast because the Proverbs are meant for us to be meditated upon to roll around in our heads and to think about what does this mean and how do I apply this to my life? How do I live as a wise person? So six weeks is actually kind of a lightning tour. Um, it's, it's incredibly slow for us in the 21st century where you can Google something in five seconds. But, but to truly uh, internalize God's word, which is what we want to do, we want to internalize it so that our lives are transformed as the followers of Jesus we got to slow it down a little bit and be contemplative people, people who meditate on the Word and who pray our way through Scripture. Um, our, uh, some of our young adults are away uh, this weekend, so just pray for their safety. They're coming back later today. Uh, and uh, what else do we got? Oh, I think the next slide. Oh, well, Music Camp continues uh, this Tuesday. This Tuesday is our last week of practicing. It's been a fun summer. Some of our kids have discovered that they actually like music. <laughs> and so, you know, when we started out, there was some that were like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, I actually enjoy this. And so that's a beautiful thing to see. Um, and, you know, because when you think about it, as, as ones who read the scriptures, the Bible tells us, commands us to sing, to worship the Lord and to think, oh, how can I have a part in this? And then, then to discover that maybe you have a musical aptitude and gift that's pretty incredible along the way, because that means down the road that, that if we apply ourselves and we follow it, we'll be able to help lead others in worship. And so that's, that's the goal, and we're so thrilled to see our kids uh, having fun along the way. Um, now I'm going to invite, uh, well, is, I know Camilla's here. So Camilla, come on up and tell us about this barbecue we got going on. <laughs> Good day, everyone. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Um, okay, so I'm excited. On Friday, we're having our community barbecue. It's very close. I want to tell everybody thanks in advance for everything that you have um, brought in for the back to school. We, however, we are still accepting donation for back to school volunteers we need. Um, and for the volunteer opportunity, you just see Rochelle. Uh, she has a list, and you can jot down what you'd like to help us out with. Uh, invite a friend, invite a kid, anybody to come on out. Let's um, preach the gospel, you know. It's a fun day, but let's also remember to tell somebody about God on that day. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. And if uh, anyone wants uh, prayer afterwards, I know that uh, Andre and Roseanne are around. So if you'd like someone to pray with you, um, then just uh, touch base with them following the service. And then for the giving of our tithes and offerings, uh, thank you for worshiping the Lord in this way. That's a, that's a vital thing to remember each each Sunday as we the Bible says set aside uh, the, the first portion of what you earn. And we give it, but we want to make sure we always give it from our heart as an act of worship. Thank you, Jesus, for the way you've blessed me. And uh, as your follower, this is part of um, my, your kingship in my life. And so that's the kind of attitude and thoughts that are to be in our mind as we give. But at this time, I'm going to invite you to stand. Sue and Benji are going to lead us in worship this morning. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. It is a real pleasure to be here today. And for those of you joining us online, too, it's a wonderful to see these children and baby Foster and Matthias and Yezzy all here uh, to worship with us. You know, worshiping God, as uh, Todd just said, is a real honor and privilege to do so. So feel free to stand or to sit, to use your body, to clap your hands, however the Lord has given you. You know, we have music for worship, but we also have worship. You know, it's great to have Wayne here and seeing this beautiful woodwork, which is an act of worship to the Lord too. So we use our voices, we use our hands, we use our lives as a way of worshiping the Lord. And so in Psalms, it says, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name today. So stand, sit, uh, move, sing, whatever you can to help us as we worship the Lord today. Uh, and this first song, we need some clapping hands. So I see some kids out there, help us with the clapping, okay? And it's going to be about God's amazing grace. Shines like the sun. 
king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you. You are our King. You are our Father. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you give us freedom. No matter what we have done, Lord, you have removed our sin as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, we don't deserve that. And we are so grateful. And our hearts lean towards you today, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would just reveal to us um, your love. That you would show us the freedom we have. That no matter when we, we sin and when we fail, Lord, that we can come to you and start new again. Like a new day dawning. We thank you for that amazing forgiveness and the work of Christ on the cross. We pray, Lord, that this service would be an honor to you and bring glory to your name, and you would help us to grow in wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. All right. We're just going to take a moment to pray together this morning, and uh, there we go. A couple of items just to note from our prayer list. Uh, please pray for uh, Bruce and Jesse. Uh, their landlord is uh, harassing them at the moment. And they have a, you have a, what day is the meeting? 29th. August 29th. So their landlord is trying to throw them out so they can charge double rent to the next person, which, so that's a bit of a, as we know from reading the news, affordable housing has become a real issue and there's lots of uh, greed in the system where people try to wring every last dollar they can out of people. Uh, but it leaves people that are in need um, in a really tough spot. And uh, so pray for Bruce and Jesse. Uh, please also pray for um, Rob's got a, been taking some interviews and asked for prayer as he thinks about whether to switch jobs or not. So please pray for Rob. And it's, and it's particularly difficult. I think, what are you, 25 years at the same place? 28 at the same place. So uh, thinking about a change after 28 years is a... That's definitely adds a new uh, twist to it. So, but do pray for Rob. And I know uh, Fanny. Uh, Fanny's here today and still in a lot of pain with her medication and trying to figure out with the CT scans that she's having. We've got our barbecue. Please uh, come on out Friday. Uh, now, the time says five to eight p.m. But I, I know if you show up at eight p.m., there won't be any food, and, and I'll be carrying a table into the church. So, <laughs> so if you want to jump in the jumping castle, come early. Uh, I think um, Camilla said that we get a jumping castle for the kids. It's being dropped off at like 10 in the morning. But if you're an adult that likes jumping castles, <laughs> come early, find the pug plug, and uh, jump to your heart's delight. So I won't say anything. I'll just video it for the church. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it should be a good time. And uh, bring a friend and, and pray. You know, our desire is to, is to connect with our community, show our love for the community. We're... We're still collecting supplies for the back to school, so if you want to donate towards that, we're still uh, accepting uh, um, uh, handouts for that to give to any kids that would come that would be in need, and so it should be a great time together. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to dive into Proverbs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for your many blessings. We think of uh, each day as we wake up, uh, that reminder that we are your children. We, uh, we've committed our lives to you, asked you to be our Savior and Lord, and um, then we thank each day of uh, living for you. And so we pray that we might have a, uh, an awareness uh, this week as we go through the week that we're your children. Uh, you've called us to holiness and righteousness. There are people that you're going to bring across our path who you uh, wish for us to help, wish for us to talk to about, about you and your ways. And so we pray for wisdom. We pray for courage. We pray for discernment. We pray for our own selves and our spiritual walk that we would be found as people who are honest and who are pure, uh, people who are kind and patient. Help us with uh, our anger and all these things that we wrestle with as we try to work out our salvation. And yet, we know that we don't do it alone. We, we have your spirit within us and we are your children. And so we pray that you would uh, strengthen us as we seek to follow you from our hearts. We pray for Bruce and Jesse, your hand of protection upon them, and as they prepare for this meeting, that uh, they would have your favor. 
we think of others that are in the very same situation of um, uh, being uh, taken advantage of by those that are motivated by greed and by money. And we pray for the, the poor of our city and our neighborhood um, for, their, uh, for their safety, for their well-being, for, for their children. And we, think, and we think of our children as a, as a group here at church getting ready to go back to school. We pray um, as they are, many of them are uh, anxious. We pray for calmness in their hearts. Uh, and as they continue relationships with friends that they've had and as they make new friends, that you would uh, just use them to be a witness uh, because as they are your followers and seeking to be the salt and light in the, in the schoolyard and in the class. Uh, for Matthew, as he's in British Columbia and starting school this year, that uh, for your provision for him and as he's away from mom and dad, uh, that, uh, and we think of other students in the same circumstance, Natalia, she heads to Oakville and others, and we just uh, thank you for them, Lord, and we pray you'd bless and strengthen them as they, ultimately as they and we each day seek to do our best, and do our best not for the applause of others, but uh, because it is you that we serve and you who we wish to please. And um, we uh, just commit our students as a whole to you, Lord, as they begin this new school year. Thank you for this day. We pray as we look into your word that your Holy Spirit would touch our hearts, speak to us, and that uh, we, there would be, you would find within us a hunger to know your ways and to live for you. And that as we study your word this week, that uh, we would be, have ears that would be open to hearing your Spirit's voice, not, me, not merely for the sake of comprehension, but that we would be found to be doers of your word coming from a heart of gratitude for your grace in our life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite you to turn with me to Proverbs chapter 22, and in this passage, it's really um, a complete unit. It goes from chapter 22, verse 17, through to chapter 24, verse 22. Now, just as a preface, there is no way you and I are going to be able to cover this section of Scripture today. But I hope to, one, I want you to see how it, it's, a, it's a unit but two, I'm hoping to inspire you to take a 30-day challenge because it really is a 30-day exercise. In this passage, Solomon says to you, I, here are 30 sayings of wisdom that I have for you to live your life by. And now with my typical Bible reading and maybe your typical Bible reading, we sit down in the morning and we, have our, we pull out our cereal and we're like, okay, I better start the day right. I'm going to start by reading my Bible. And so we're eating our cereal, and as soon as our bowl is empty, <laughs> devotion time is over, right? <laughs> um, and then we hop up. And maybe, you, maybe, you're, you're, maybe you're a good eater, and you just take your time, and you like to chew. Uh, and so it takes you 10 minutes, and you read these 30 sayings of Solomon, and you're like, wow, that's really cool, right? And then we, and then we go through the rest of the day, and then tomorrow we pick up a new passage of Scripture, and we just moved on from the 30-day challenge, right? And one of the things that I'm discovering and you're discovering about God's Word is we're meant to roll it around in our minds. We're meant to dwell on it. And so, you know, and, and here at the church, we try to get through the Bible reading together every five years. So I realized next week when we're reading chapter 26 to 31, we, we're, we've already, we're moving through God's Word because I want to show you how all of God's Word connects together. But if you want to add a little something, um, take what these 30 sayings of Solomon, 30 sayings of wisdom, he, he tells us why he wrote these words, because he wants to build our faith. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? I want to build your faith, and so let me tell you how to live before the Lord, and how to be a wise person in his presence. Uh, and so when you and I read this, you, you know, we're going to move fast today. But I want to encourage you to come back to it and take the time that you need to digest something that's so uh, vital in terms of walking before the Lord. Now, one of the things that we're going to notice, and go ahead, Yvette, is our passage is steeped in controversy. You wouldn't know it by reading it because you're, when you read the Bible, you're just saying, here's 30 sayings of Solomon for how to live a wise life and how to grow in your faith. But in 1888... There was a, um, an Osiris that was purchased from, a, from the British uh, Museum. And, uh, well, actually, it came from Thebes, but this Osiris was hollowed out as an Egyptian god or whatever. But in the, in the middle of it, it had this scroll, and a scroll by this happy-faced guy on the screen, uh, Amenhotep, 
Amenhotep was an Egyptian king. And their discovery was of a 12-foot long scroll that rambled and weaved all over the place. But the, the critical thing about the scroll was it contains the ideas that Solomon writes to us in Proverbs 22 to 24. This became a problem because the people that found it um, and that got their hands on it, they didn't really believe the Bible in the way that you and I believe the Bible. They were intent, one of the guys was a theist, so he believed in God, but he believed that there was many different ways to God, and yet he called himself a biblical archaeologist. And he belonged to this club of what are called source critics. And source critics are people that they read the Bible not as a love letter from God, not as the word of God that every word is, his, is from him, but they read the Bible with this really critical eye that says, you know, I don't really trust the Bible. Some of it I'd consider legit and some of it I won't. And I'm going to tear it apart and find where its sources are and then I'll, just, I'll determine on my own what I'm going to accept. Well, that's really dangerous to your faith. Um, and it's good to be aware that there are wolves in sheep's clothing. Jesus warns us about people who would, take to, who would be there to strip away your faith and to destabilize you in your walk. Uh, well, these jokers, they said, hey, listen, Amenhotep, this guy Amenhotep, even though it's in this rambling form covering a 12-foot scroll, it looks to, we think that Amenhotep was born before Solomon, and hence we think that Solomon plagiarized Amenhotep and made just a better, more succinct version in Proverbs. Well, like I said, the danger of falling for that theory, which is popular in, in, in uh, theological circles, the danger of falling for that theory is now you've undermined the authority of God's word. Now you've undermined the authority of God's word that said Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived apart from Christ. Why would the wisest man who ever lived apart from Christ be taking from this guy? That's a good question to ask. Um, and then once that seed of doubt is started to plant in someone's brain, then you read the Bible not as a, this is the authoritative word, but now you read it with doubt. And so, there, but there's another way of looking at it. One is to realize that Egyptian chronology uh, is messed up. If you try to figure out the history of the world and you're like, I'm going to follow the, who the kings are of Egypt and then I'll know what historical events happened it, when, you'll end up with your head spinning because of the constant revisionist history with an Egyptian chronology. The better view is, is that Amenhotep plagiarized Solomon and not the other way around. Um, Amenhotep uh, borrowed from Solomon, Solomon who was famous around the world, people would travel to him. The, the queen of Sheba came all the way from Ethiopia to ply Solomon with questions, went away amazed at the gifting of God um, and the answers that he gave. People journeyed the world over to see Solomon and to hear the wisdom that he, he had. Uh, and so the better view is, is that Amenhotep is not the source for Solomon. Amenhotep is the guy that borrowed from Solomon and it has to do with dating. Now, why do I all say all that? Because you're going to have some smart Alex in your life who try to trip you up, who they, they know a little bit. They've gone to school. They took a theological course, but they're not, they're not on your team. They don't love Jesus from their heart. They just exist to make trouble for you. And they don't exist to build your faith. They actually live to try to destabilize people in their faith. And you and I need to be aware of people's tricks. And so if someone ever says, well, you know, Amenhotep, this is Solomon plagiarized. And then you're like, wait a second. I remember Todd one day was talking about this in church and he took 10 minutes to explain it. And I thought it was boring, but wait a minute. <laughs> It's actually kind of important to be aware of the wolves that are out there that are seeking to steal your faith and, and de destabilize your trust in, in Christ and in the Bible. So that's a little bit of a background um, to this. Now, the other thing that you should know, which is kind of neat, if you, when you read Proverbs this week, um, well, you, when you read it this week, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 1, also gives another neat little piece of information about the book of Proverbs. The compiler of Proverbs was actually King Hezekiah 200 years after Solomon. Solomon, the Bible says, wrote 3,000 Proverbs. 856 or so are in the book of Proverbs. Where are the other 2,000? Well, by the direction of the Holy Spirit, 
uh, who led the authors and, and people that put the Bible together. It wasn't there. They're not. We don't have them. But what we do have is the ones that the Spirit of God led. And, but it's Hezekiah, uh, who was a righteous king, in chapter 25, we're told that actually that's how the book came to be. So it's not like Solomon lived, just so you know, Solomon lived to be 70 years old. His life was cut short because of his, the sins of all the wives that he had and all the gods that he introduced into Israel, which destroyed Israelite society. And so he dies at age 70. He's not 69 years old and be like, I need to write this book. No, it's, we see in chapter 25, it's actually righteous Hezekiah who, by the Spirit of God, gathers together Solomon's writings and puts it into this form. So that's kind of a neat thing just to be aware of. But here's the point about Proverbs, which we must not forget. It says in the beginning of Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Where does wisdom begin? It begins with a relationship with God. Uh, the invitation of God is so amazing. It's come to me for life come to me for forgiveness. Uh, I am your creator uh, and, and come to me. That, what, what better invitation is there to be invited into, as a sinner, to be invited into relationship with God, who then says, I've also made provision for the forgiveness of your sins. You can escape the day of judgment. I sent my son, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came down to earth. God became a man and dwelt in our midst. And then he gave himself as a once for all sacrifice that we might have forgiveness and eternal life. And God's invitation is, take hold of the gift that I offer you. Be reconciled to me, not on your terms. Come to me on my terms, and you'll experience my grace and forgiveness and love. The beginning of wisdom starts with a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's, and you know, there's not a day that goes by, uh, hardly, that I don't pray for wisdom. There's not a day go by that I don't pray for patience. These are constants in my life. What's the right thing to do? What's the right thing to say? How do I respond when I'm feeling my stress meter rise? And so I pray for patience and I pray for wisdom a lot, and you probably do as well. But the beautiful thing is, God says in his word, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask of me and I'll give it to you. That's amazing. Ask me for wisdom, wait upon me, I will provide what you need, and I'll give you the words to say, and I'll give you the insight. But we've got our part to do, but there's the amazing gift of God. And so that's just a little introduction. Now, these, this 30-day adventure that we're going to take in 15 minutes, um, <laughs> that's pretty crazy, isn't it? 30-day adventure in 15 minutes. We're just going to sample some of the verses uh, and some of the, the sayings of wisdom that Solomon has for us. And we're not going to touch on all, and we can't. But Solomon begins, incline your ear and hear the words of the wise and apply your heart to my knowledge, for it will be pleasant if you keep them within you, if all of them are ready on your lips, that your trust, why does he write these 30 sayings? Why does he give us this 30-day challenge? He says, I want your faith in the Lord. And, and notice it's capital L-O-R-D. Whenever you read in the Bible, in the Old Testament, capital L-O-R-D, that's God's personal name, Yahweh, who invites us into relationship with him and invites us to draw near to him, and it says he will draw near to you. He says that your trust in the Lord, that, 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 that it would grow. I have made no, them known to you today, even to you. Have I not written for you 30 sayings of counsel and knowledge to make you know what is right and true, that you may give a true answer to those who sent you? Uh, and so then he begins and with these 30 sayings. And you know, what I find really fascinating is, what's the very first thing Solomon addresses? He says, you want to live, live wisely before me? You need to look after the poor. You need to look after people who are oppressed and who are taken advantage of by others. There's lots of people that will take advantage of other people. You're not to be in that crowd. The poor, uh, the disabled, those in need, do not rob the poor because he's poor or crush the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause and rob of life those who rob them. Basically, he's saying there is a judgment day that is coming for those that are in rebellion against God. Uh, but he says, you as you live, when you see someone that's in need, have a generous heart and have an open hand and stand up for those that can't stand up for themselves. That's, that's the mission of the church. You know, when you look at the church in the New Testament, uh, what is one of the primary activities of the church within the community is to take care of those that no one else seems to care about. 
That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's, we are to have our doors open to those that are in need. What is the church? What's the old saying? The church is to be a, hosp it's a hospital for sick people. It's not bring all your shiny, happy, got their life together people to this place. It's we come as sinners who are in need of the grace of God, and we're all in the same boat as, as people who are, that is who we are, sinners saved by grace. When we put our trust in Jesus, and we are to have open arms and open hearts, particularly to those that have nothing and have no resource. Um, and then right after that, the second day of, so day two, so Monday is saying one, <laughs> saying two is make, and then there's this reminder with a man or woman, so flip the man or woman, make no friendship with a man or woman given to anger, nor go with a wrathful person, lest you learn their ways and entangle yourself in a snare. These sayings are meant to be thought about, not just read like lightning speed, but it's almost like he says, you know what, get a pad of paper and write down what you think, what you think of when you read these and how this might apply and, and the kind of person that we're, how to be a wise person. And we are reminded time and time again in the scripture, be careful of the company that you keep. Be careful of who you throw your lot in with. Because we often, we think of ourselves, we think, well, I'm an influencer. That's a big statement today, right? Influencers. Um, people trying to get rich on TikTok, basically. Um, influencers. But we think, well, I'm, a, I'm an influencer in the, in the circles that I am. And so I'm, but we also realize, you know, other people are influencing us. And so he says, be careful who you throw your lot in with. Um, then there's the saying number three, which is just kind of neat. It's a little reminder, be not one of those who gives pledges, who puts up security for debts. If you have nothing which to pay, why should your be ted bed be taken from under you? It's, it's just a little reminder. When someone says, hey, would you sign this loan for me? <laughs> or would you serve as my guarantor on this? That's a little, you, you better dot all your I's and cross all your T's if you're going to sign your life away to, for somebody else. Um, and Solomon says, if you're willing to lose your bed in the middle of the night, sign the form. <laughs> but if you don't want to be left on the street, think twice about, about who you're going to serve as a guarantor for. It's, you know, what is, now, the flip side of that is, is if you have the ability to be generous to somebody, someone says, hey, I'm in a bad state, um, are you able to help me? You don't answer right away. You sometimes you just say, hey, listen, can I, have a mo can I have a little bit of time to think about that and pray about that? And maybe the Lord puts it on your heart and says, you should give some money to them. Then give the money, but don't necessarily sign your life away, but be generous because we're called to be generous. Let's uh, see where we're going to go next. Um, 30 sayings. Uh, oh, I want to touch on, ver on saying number four because it's, it's more important than we probably realize. It says, do not move the ancient landmark that your fathers have set. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, if you, have, if you live in a house, um, I live in a house. Let's suppose one day my neighbor tears down the fence and then he builds a new fence. But the new fence is like a foot into my property. <laughs> What's he doing? Is stealing, right? And and now we've got a question over. Well, where is your sur what survey say? Um, and and here this this was a big deal in in Israel is when it says don't move the ancient landmark. They would actually mark your property with stones. This belongs to you. And 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 he and but here's the thing about Israelite culture, is when they came into the promised land, the, the land that God promised them of which they spent 400 years waiting for as they were slaves in Egypt, and they came and God gave them the land. The land was given by the casting of lots, 12 tribes, and every family within those 12 tribes in the land, in the land grouping was given a place in the land, and it, and it was said to them, this is, your, this is your inheritance from the Lord. This is, this is a guarantee of your place within God's society. And then the idea that someone would steal your place in God's society. And he's saying, there's people that do that, that they, that they use their power and they use their influence to steal what belongs to others. But it's the theological impart of being longing to, this is my belonging as a people of God. There's widespread application within that and that spreads throughout the scriptures. But the other thing about that is, 
and I want to make mention of it because it ties in with the poor and it ties in with um, this, this, I, this concept, is do you know that every 50 years, I don't think the Israelites ever practiced this. There was something called the year of Jubilee. And God built into his economy and that every 50 years there would be a great reset economically. And so what happened is sometimes hard times come and say, say a hard time came to me and I had to sell everything I had, had to sell my property, had to even make myself a servant or slave of somebody else because of decisions or crop failure or whatever. Every 50 years, everyone's property was to re revert to the original owners, the original family. What an amazing provision by God for, for successful society. Did they ever follow it? I don't know, because the human heart is pretty greedy. But God's design was for that. And so when he says, don't move the landmarks, there was a great reset coming every 50 years. And so, you know, what happens if all of a sudden you're like, where'd my landmark go? Where's my place in God's, in, in, this, in this land gone as a, as a child of God? And, and you can think about some of, the, like I say, some of the theological streams that connect to our belonging to Christ. Um, as a, as, uh, but that's another whole other discussion. But I wanted to draw that, your attention to that, because it's just, it's just so amazing. Now, I got five minutes. Um, let's move on. Go ahead. Uh, number seven. Yes. Do not toil to acquire wealth. I bet you're doing amazing. <laughs> Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. When your eyes light on it, it's gone, for suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle towards toward heaven. There's a few lessons in there. One, um, where are we storing our treasure? You know, the world lives to acquire and get more and more and more. And there's this, and Solomon's a, a counsel to us is, you know, don't spend your life chasing stuff that's just going to rot and be eaten by moss and is open to being stolen by others. You're wasting your life just pursuing material things and pursuing money. Where is it going to get you? He says, really, he's, he's challenging us to think beyond. And, and Jesus tells us as much. Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust cannot, cannot get to it. And we're to be rich in good deeds. We're to be rich in righteousness. And when Solomon tells us, he's calling us to being a people of contentment, which is really hard in a material culture. You know, we, we live in this... We live in an affluent culture uh, that is all about things. You know, uh, I drove yesterday. I saw like 20 Teslas. I saw a Lambo. You know, you know, I've on, on one of these Reddit subreddits, and, and people are like, Wall Street bets like when Lambo, right? <laughs> and, and here I am. I'm like, wow, there's a Lamborghini. But not a not a week goes by in Etobicoke where I don't see a Lamborghini. We live in a culture of affluence, of wealth. People, this is what they live for. Uh, and then to show off their stuff. And Solomon, he reminds us, as, as we're reminded of the scriptures, is when is enough enough? What are you doing with the things that God has blessed you? Do you have a generous heart? Are you a person of contentment? And guess what? All the material things of this world are disappearing. And so where are you going to put your energies and time? And, and, the, and Jesus says... Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Focus on what's really important. People need the Lord. People are really important. Put your life and your energy into serving others. That's where the eternal reward is that cannot be taken away from you. And so day by day, Solomon says, here's a 30-day challenge to grow in wisdom, to be a wise person, not, person, not just personally, but in the circles that you swim in, in the, in the city that you live in, follow these things and you will be wise and you will know God's favor and you will know God's blessing. Turn your ears and your heart to, to what it means to be a wise person. And we've just scratched the surface. We've talked about some of the controversy that's behind the passage. We talked about the big message of the book of Proverbs as a whole is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then the nuts and bolts. Solomon's into the nuts and bolts now. And that little reminder is right at the top. I'm always, I want to come back to it because it's so vital. Um, 
what, does, what is the mission of the church? It's, 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 it includes, foremost, taking care of, the, of those that are in need, taking care of the poor, telling the message of Jesus and how to be reconciled to him, but always the poor. If you forget the poor, you've lost the message. We must be people who have open hearts uh, and open arms to people to serve in the name of Christ because it's all past, everything in our world is passing away. But our hope is in Christ uh, and, and, and we need, every day as Christians, we need to fix our eyes upon him and remind ourselves who we are as the followers of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. I pray as we study it this week, and take time to be with you, to talk to you, to meditate upon your word, that we would uh, have a beautiful experience of uh, growing in our walk with you, of, uh, of sensing your presence. Uh, and, and as we try to work out our, as your scriptures tell, tell us, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, as we pursue holiness and righteousness, we pray for eyes to see the needs of people around us. We pray for discernment, and we pray for wisdom and patience. Uh, that we might uh, truly be salt and light. We thank you for this day that you blessed us with, and I thank you for each one that's here, and we pray so in the name of Jesus. Amen.